everyone. I am Kristen K. Moraleda Tabalina, together with my group mates, Sofia Angel Iinado, Kala Minor, and Janine Caballero. We are here to discuss to you our topic, which is Module 4, Unfolding the Mental Self. Our topic is consists of two sections, which are, first, cognition, memory, and intelligence, and second, human learning. But first, let us know our objectives. Good day everyone. My name is Carla Shemul Jeminor and I will read the objectives. At the end of this lesson, students are intended to explain and elaborate concepts, processes on cognition, memory, and intelligence. Analyze and demonstrate how cognition, memory, and intelligence are manifested in various aspects of their life. Identify the principle of cognition, memory, and intelligence present in their own lives. Explain the learning process. Discuss the factor that influence the learning process. And apply principle of learning to their academic life. So what is cognition? People are born with innate capabilities that empower them to manage themselves in various settings and situations. As an individual is born, his or her reactions and reflexes that are developmental milestones are dependent on the individual senses. As one grows older, he or she begins to observe the environment, analyze information, make choices, and behave appropriately according to what the situation warrants. From the sensory-based acquisition of knowledge, one is led to a more logical and abstract manner of thinking as an individual grows older, evidenced by more complex, complex tasks and challenges that one is faced as he or she matures. Even school tasks correspond to the mental level that students are expected to be in, from simple counting of numbers and basic mathematical operations Students in senior high school and college are expected to be successfully hurdled through complicated math problems in algebra, trigonometry, geometry, and the like because of the intellectual competency level these students are expected have compared to when they were in grade school. High school and college students are expected to write compositions research studies and other literature that require the use of more advanced mental mechanism than what was expected from them when they were in just learning to write and read. From these examples, it is observed that one's mental capacity is evolving in a progressive sequential manner which is anchored to an individual's biological development. Cognition is a crucial part of an individual's development process, which influences behavior just, uh, just as how behavior also impacts it. Assuming a biconditional connection, the way information is taken in and how it is analyzed and processed is a function of human cognition. According to Ashcraft and Ravensky 2010, they defined cognition as the complex array of mental processes involves the, in remembering, perceiving, and thinking how these processes are employed. It is an umbrella term to cover, to cover all higher order thinking processes, even something as simple as slicing a piece of cake, drinking a glass of water, reading a book, and taking down notes involve number of thinking mechanism. When one is presented with options, he or she analyzes which among them is the best choice, pursue it, and anticipate the consequences that came along with it. The study of how individual thinks and arrive at choice and decisions is relevant across several points of human development. When one is able to understand how he or she and other people think, he or she achieves greater understanding of himself or, or herself and of others. In the past, people were taught to believe according to how they were conditioned. For instance, a child states he intends to become a doctor, 
because he was conditioned by his parents to pursue this profession. An adolescent smoked because of peer pressure. From a behaviorist perspective, behavior manifested is predisposed by the environment. However, people are not robots. They are not machines that can be manipulated by different factors of the environment. People are capable of reasoning to manage their behavior. An individual is his or her own agents of behavior and change and change. People may be replaced in certain environments, exposed to the same people constantly and drilled constantly with the facts and habits, but people have a choices in dealing with all of these factors. One is able to make mental presentation of what is present around him or her. Select which are the most viable options available and then act on them. People are overtly and covertly achieved individuals constantly moving and constantly processing information coming from the environment. Good day, I am Sophia Angel Inado and I am here to elaborate to you the definition and concepts of memory. If cognition covers all higher order thinking processes within an individual, a major focus of its study is the function of memory. So what is memory? Memory is the faculty of the mind through which information is acquired and retained for later use. Memory is often likened to a computer system where the process of encoding, storing, and receiving information happen continuously. Just like a computer, human memory is limited within specific conditions. People select information to be retained and discard those that are deemed irrelevant and useless. Memory can also be corrupted by various factors, both internal and external to an individual. So there are three levels of functions of memory. These are sensory, short-term or working, and long-term memory. So sensory memory is a level that allows information from the external environment to be perceived by an individual through senses, usually in the form of chemical and physical stimuli, often with focus and intent. In sensory memory, information can be grasped even at a split second. However, not all stimuli are perceived by sensory memory. The mind can only accommodate sensory information that will be useful, which is then transferred to one's short-term memory. So, the next level of functions of memory is short-term or working memory. It is where the information is temporarily stored, where information is simultaneously remembered and is in readily available state, typically 10 to 15 seconds up to 1 minute. Short-term memory can store up to 5 to 9 items, after which information is discarded if there is no conscious and deliberate effort to retain it. Lastly, when there is a deliberate effort and it is done consistently and with practice, then this information is transferred to long-term memory. Information stored in long-term memory is often permanent and allows for repeated retrievals across situations. When useful and interesting information is gained, it can lead one to read on related literature that enhances the presence of that information in one's mind. Long-term memory is where information can be held indefinitely. Thus, the amount of information that can be stored in this level is limitless and immeasurable. Intelligence Intelligence is defined in a number of ways. The term is referred to as an individual's capacity for understanding, learning, planning, and problem-solving with logic, creativity, and self-awareness. It is characterized as the application of knowledge to be able to adjust to the environment. It is the process of applying knowledge in the proper context whenever the need arises. Intelligence is often thought of as 
hereditary rather than environmental. Two things should be noted about intelligence. Individuals are born with innate intellectual ability that is harnessed in various contexts. And intelligence is not confined in the academic context. Intelligence is a critical construct that showcases the presence of individual differences based on intellect. A number of theories have already been presented regarding intelligence. Howard Gartner's theory of multiple intelligence purposes eight areas of human intelligence. First, verbal linguistic. It is the ability to analyze information and produce output that involves oral and written language. Second, logical mathematical. It is the ability to understand and answer mathematical questions. Third, visual spatial. It is the ability to analyze graphical information. Musical. It is the ability to produce and make meaning different types of sound. Naturalistic. It is the ability to identify and distinguish aspects of the natural world. Bodily kinesthetic. It is the ability to use one's body to create products or solve problems. Interpersonal. It is the ability to be sensitive of other people's thoughts and emotion. Intrapersonal. It's the ability for self-introspection. Aside from Gartner's multiple intelligence theory, another theory is proposed by Robert Sternberg called the Triarchic Theory of Intelligence. According to Sternberg, intelligence is defined as a mental activity directed toward purposes adaption to selection and shaping of real-world environments relevant to oneself. Sternberg purposed three aspects of intelligence, Componential, Experiential, and Contextual. First, Componential, the alternative name is Analytical. It is includes abstract thinking and logical reasoning, verbal, and mathematical skills. Second, Experiential, the alternative name is Creative. It is divergent thinking and ability to deal with novel situations. Contextual. The alternative name is practical. It is being street smart, ability to apply knowledge to real world and shape or choose an environment. According to this theory, intelligence is a function of how these three aspects are interchangeably used by the individual and up to what levels they are used. Both the theory of multiple intelligence and the triarchic Theory of intelligence explains the nature of intelligence and the personal and environmental factors that shape it. My name is Christian K. Morleta Tabalina and I am here to share what I know about the human learning. So, what is learning? Learning is defined as a relatively permanent change in a person's knowledge or behavior as a result of experience. So if cognition, memory, and intelligence are underlying mechanisms that allow people to perceive, process, and apply information for daily adaptation, then learning is a natural consequence of these mechanisms. This definition connotes three things. First, the change is long-term. Second, the source of change comes from within the external structures of memory or knowledge of this individual. And third, the change is attributed to the personal experience of the learner in environment. When knowledge transferred to long-term memory, which are further elaborated, rehearsed, and practiced, then learning happens. An example is solving a difficult mathematical problem. The student listens to the math teacher, reads books, and memorize the formulas and principle to be used. Practices solving different equations and does this over and over again to learn how to solve the mathematical problem accurately with ease. People learn in several theories. One such theory is the social cognitive theory, which emphasizes the value of the social environment in one's learning process that is built in observational learning. There are four stages in observational learning the attention, retention, motor reproduction, and motivation. So, attention. Attention is when an individual focus on information that she perceives to be interesting and useful. So, retention, 
it stores and gives a mental representation of the information. So the motor reproduction recalls and rehearses the information given. And the last motivation is repeat the entire process constantly and consistently and consistently when learning happens. The notion of learning is underlined by notions of self-efficacy and human agency. So what is self-efficacy? Self-efficacy is defined as the extent to which people believe that they can confidently learn and master a particular skill. According to Albert Bandura, self-efficacy can be developed through first mastery experience. So mastery experience is accomplishing simple tasks that lead more complex tasks. Second, social modeling. It is observing an identifiable model who accomplishes the task. Third, improving physical and emotional states. It's being relaxed and calm before pursuing a challenge task. So the last is the verbal persuasion. It is providing encouragement and feedback during the accomplishment of a challenging task. So what is human agency? So human agency is another valuable principle in the learning process. Human agency can be developed through first intentionality. Intentionality is making an active decision to engage in particular activities. So second, forethought. It is anticipating outcomes and consequences of particular actions. Third, self-reactiveness. It is constructing and regulating behavior appropriately. And the last, self-reflectiveness. It is reflecting and evaluating one's thoughts and behavior. There are two strategies in learning that students can use. First, deep learning. What is deep learning? So deep learning is the deeper understanding of information by creating significant meaningful links across different concepts and how it can be applied in practical ways. Second, surface learning. Surface learning is students simply accept information presented to them and memorize them in an isolated and unlinked manner. So to adapt deep learning strategies, students can engage in the following habits. First, taking down notes. Second, asking questions during class sessions. Third, creating cognitive maps. Fourth, engaging in collaborative learning activities with mentors and peers. Fourth, going beyond the mandatory course requirements.